trying to help you uh, to generate leads and that's how the brokers and uh, agents run their business by getting those leads so that's pretty much about the realtor.com um, okay so let's talk about our story uh, we were not using webdriver io until uh, two months back so two months back uh, we decided to implement uh, or we decided to convert our website into a, a progressive web application and as part of that uh, effort uh, we were trying to consolidate the technology stack. So we, we have been using uh, Ruby on Rails uh, for both backend and frontend but uh, yes, <laughs> yes I was expecting somebody would say that, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Yes, so, but no more. So we are, uh, we are migrating towards uh, React and Node. Uh, our te uh, testing stack was Java, TestNG, and Maven. So how many of you have used Java, TestNG, and Maven? Can you please raise your hands? Thank you. So I'm not the old timer. All right. Um, and how many of you have used a data provider feature of TestNG? Or even heard about it? Cool. All right. Yeah, so we were using uh, Java, TestNG, and Maven, uh, but as part of consolidation, we, try, uh, we, we, we plan to migrate away from Java, TestNG, and Maven and pick something uh, which speaks the common language uh, according to our app stack. And, our, uh, and after doing a lot of research, we settled down with WebDriver.io. Uh, it's a great framework, of course, and it does provide you the uh, capability to run your test concurrently, but uh, we wanted to take the concurrency to the next level because if you know TestNG and if you know data provider, then what actually it does that when you run your test with multiple sets of data, you can actually run those data sets in parallel. So it, it, it makes your, it, redu it reduces your execution time uh, even further. And we try to port the same feature to WebDriver IO. So in a nutshell, what is a data provider? Uh, allows if you are a, a test authors, automation authors, it allows you to inject test data into your test at the runtime. Uh, data could be as simple as a number and as complex as a complex object. Uh, can help with the data manipulation and preparation. So as part of your data provider, you can also prepare your test data or manipulate your test data on the fly and can run same test with multiple sets of data. That is the the main feature which it provides to you. Um, why it is so important for us? Why do we need data provider? So this is the, the search box uh, from our uh, homepage. And if you look at the host text displayed here, it says that you can either search with an address, a city or state code, or a zip code, or neighborhood, and there are many more actually. You can search with the school and so on and so forth. Plus, if you Pay attention, there are context on the top displayed as a tab. So you can perform the same set of search in the context of buying a property. You can perform the same set of search in, uh, in the context of renting a property, uh, sold property, and so on and so forth. So it's one test, actually, which is going to run in different uh, context of the data. And if you look at the current setup of the web driver IO, what it takes, you have a test and you have this data sets. And then you have a one browser session dedicated to one test. And what it actually happens, that when you start running your test, your test take the first data set, puts it into the browser session, executes it. Once the execution is finished, it takes the next data sets, put it into the same old browser session, executes it, and so on and so forth. There are two problems here. One is, when you are running the test with your different data sets and your test is a stateful test, which means that if this, the state of the browser from the previous run has been carried forward to the next run, and if that is going to hamper the output of your test, then this is not, a, this is not the appropriate way of running the same test with multiple data set because, because you might run into a problem your test might uh, show some results which is completely uh, abrupt, uh, not appropriate. So, um, so one problem is the stateful. If, the, uh, if your test is dependent on the state, uh, statefulness of the browser, it is not going to work. Plus, it is running in sequential fashion. So as you can see, first you ran the test with the data set one, then data set two, then data set three, and so on and so forth. 
So what happens? At the end, the execution time is going to be the sum of all those execution. What we try to do that we change the behavior of the web driver runner slightly so that when it is uh, deciding that how many worker threads you need, it can also consider the amount of data or the data sets you are trying to run your test with. So right when you are actually uh, you know, uh, building your, uh, injecting your capabilities into the runner, we also inject the test data set as part of that building logic. And what it does that, based on the capability, plus based on the data set you are trying to inject or you're going to inject into your test, it can compute the correct number of worker threads for you so that all your tests can run in parallel. So what will happen now? When you submit your test, they all are going to run in parallel because now you can create three, four, five, n sessions, as many sessions, or as many as data sets you have, plus the capability. It will create separate browser sessions for you, so that if your test is stateful, it is not going to um, uh, interfere with each other. And then it will, once the execution is finished, all those sessions will be terminated. Time taken, max of, maximum of all those execution times. So if your T2 is going to take the maximum amount of time, that is going to be your overall execution time rather than the, rather than the sum of the you know, execution time. So we reduce the execution time drastically with this implementation. Um, how did we do it? So this is, this is a kind of block diagram where we uh, modified stuff uh, in, uh, uh, in WebDriver IO framework. And um, all the red blocks are the blocks or, all, or the packages which were modified. Even though at the end it says that um, it is talking to Mocha, but it can literally support any framework which is being supported by WebDriver iOS of today. We just took, we, we just placed Mocha over there for, a, for an example. And I'm going to hand it over to Mohan, and he's going to talk about uh, this implementation in detail, plus he's going to also uh, run a live demo if possible. If not, we'll play a recorded version of the demo. Hi, I'm Mohan, uh, working with Vikram on uh, productivity engineering tools for our team. Uh, to start with, uh, this diagram may not be perfect. We try to reverse engineer the framework and we try to like end up with this block diagram. Uh, so if you see here, like so far you have heard uh, why we need data provider from Vikram. Like now we are going to see how we have implemented it. Uh, so if you see these block diagrams, like uh, each of these represents a different module in the WebDriver IO framework. Uh, whenever you start running the test, CLI is the first module that gets kicked in. Then it hands it over to a local runner or Lambda runner based on the configuration. Then it hands over to, uh, it creates a worker process, then it hands over to the actual uh, runner. That runner is like a wrapper around like different uh, uh, testing uh, frameworks like Mocha, Jasmine. Uh, so this is a flow. So if you see like, uh, it goes to the index file of the CLI module, then it goes to run file. If you see the launcher.json fi file, that's the place where we try to like uh, uh, have the logic to create the queuing mechanism. Uh, that's why we try to create the number of uh, uh, capabilities that we want. That's why we try to determine all uh, this stuff. So that's why we try to like parse the configuration file and understand where our tests are, where our uh, uh, what are our configurations, then based on the capabilities, then we try to like combinate all these things and we create the queuing mechanism. So we try to tweak this based on the data that we try to inject for each and every test. Uh, how we try to do is like, we try to like uh, have one more config in the uh, configuration file uh, that, uh, that, uh, the, that is for like setting up the path where we have the data provider files to uh, uh, like load it in the runtime. And once it loads it, then we try to uh, calculate the uh, queuing logic based on the data that we have injected. So later, it tries to like fork the process. We try to like uh, get the data and assign it to each and every test, the queuing mechanism, and we pass on the same data to the subsequent layers. So that's why you have seen uh, you are seeing the red blocks in the subsequent layers as well. So it's just the data that we are trying to like bind it uh, to the 
global state of the actual uh, uh, test run uh, running instance. So that's what is uh, all about that we have done. So probably I'll just go over the code and I can just walk you through how we have implemented it. Probably I'll just try to like show you a test code uh, using the modified framework. So I have like two configurations right now, one to run without data provider and one with data provider. So I have like created two tests. Uh, both will be same uh, uh, for, the, for the same functionality. So let's say we are in realtor.com. I'm going to like search for properties in like different cities. I'm going to search for San Francisco, New York, and Austin. And I'm just going to like search results page and I'm going to uh, validate the title. Basically like that's what, uh, that's, that's a kind of SEO test that we try to do. So for each and every city, we have a different SEO information on the title and uh, headers. So I'm just trying to validate that. So it would be different for different uh, cities. Uh, if you do it in sequence, the test would be looking like this. You have to take the cities. I have the list of cities here. This is the data that I have. I'm trying to like run the same test on different cities, Seattle, San Francisco, and Austin. If you are uh, trying to run this test without data provider, then you have to like loop through and like see, uh, run it in a sequential manner. So uh, we will be using the same browser session and we will be trying to like uh, run the same steps again and again in a loop for different set, set of cities. If you use data provider, so we don't need to do the looping mechanism at the test level. So instead, this will be like uh, run in parallel in different test sessions altogether. So how we have done this like, so if you go to uh, WDIO config file, we have a configuration for setting up the path of the data provider files. So here, if you, you can see uh, the path for uh, the data provider files that we have set up. This is a folder where we have the data provider file. So this is the first step that uh, we have to do. The second step uh, that involves here is like, we have to uh, distribute the test data for different tests. For example, you might have like uh, n number of tests in our suite. Uh, we may not need to inject the same data on all the tests. We might need to like inject the uh, data for uh, one particular test. If that is the case, then we need to have a, a hook method that's called data provider uh, global method. So it takes two parameters. One is the file that you want to inject the data for, and you have to pass the data. So the second parameter should be an array, because uh, since we are going to run uh, uh, the same test for uh, multiple data set, so we want to have it as an array. So you can you have to pass a, a data in the second parameter, and you have to pass a file name in the first parameter. So once you do it, if you see the actual test, so we have created a global variable called test data. So we try to like parse that array and we take uh, one parameter by one parameter and we sequence it, uh, uh, we parallelize it, and we take the uh, element and we try to like send it in place of test data. And here we use the test data for uh, searching and we are using the same data for asserting as well. Uh, probably I'll just try to run with data provider and I'll show you. So I'm going to run the same test. It goes to realtor.com, it is going to search for a city, then it goes to the next page, search results page, then it is going, going to check the SEO information on the header. It, it's going to basically check the title, and then it's going to check the headers. So it, it goes to all the three different cities in parallel, and in So here you can see the, in the interface, you can see the number of tests also as three. So based on the number of data that you pass, it tries to calculate the total number of tests that we have. Uh, so this will be reflected in the report as well when we try to get the report 
uh, this will the same number of uh, tests will get reported there as well. I think it is waiting for some loading. This is why we need PWA. Just take on stuff loading. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just close it. Yeah, just close it. Yeah. So that's it. So if you have any questions. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so I have a question. Um, so how's the the system resources you know usage for the parallel? Because I run, uh, you know, um, I have a Mac, uh, I think 16 gig uh, RAM. Um, if I run, uh, uh, from my experience, if I run uh, like four browsers and uh, there's like tens of, like 20 files fail, it, let's say if I reduce to two instances of Chrome browser, then it kind of reduce linear to, to uh, uh, like a 10 test fail. So, just want to know you guys, how was your uh, experience on the, the system, the performance of the on your local machine? Sure, so uh, we haven't done any profiling that how many browser sessions you can run in parallel based on your machine capacity. But um, like eight to 10 browser sessions so far, we have been trying and I guess with 16 gigs of RAM, it will, it will run just fine. Uh, we haven't tried, personally, I haven't tried anything more than that. So, and we haven't run any profiling. So I, I, I really don't know how much your machine can handle. But that's what we have been running, eight to 10 parallel session, not more than that. So this and week some feature? some data related to that is uh, on the 32 gig PC uh, windows. Uh, we can run up to 16 parallel browsers. OK, great. Yeah. So actually, if you want to control the number of Threads, I think you can just try to control it with max instances that we have in the config file. Yeah, you can just limit it to uh, whatever number that is like best for the mission. That's something I guess which you have to keep trying based on the kind of uh, in, uh, hardware you're using yeah. and how much it can handle. So. Um, you said you have modified some packages. Um, did you guys really set independently to the WebDAO packages, or how do you overwrite the custom behavior? Yeah, so actually we tried to like perform some leadership internally earlier. Uh, then we were not able to, uh, so we still have issues in publishing it to internal artifactory. Uh, then we decided to like, uh, uh, add the framework code. So we maintain a fork of the framework on an internal uh, enterprise uh, GitHub. So we try to have add it as a Git sub-module for the test project, then we try to build it each time before we try to run the test. So that's what we are currently doing right now. So probably if you... <laughs> so, so it's right now it's internally hosted, but we will be more than happy to uh, open source it. If community feels that this is a good feature and community needs it, We'll be more than happy to. No, I was even it. thinking making it a native functionality. If, if we can, like, just pull it in, um, I think many people will use it. Yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, we will do that. So, as long as there is no uh, legal issues. Last time, I the framework I was working on, uh, we developed a bunch of features, and we could not open source it because the 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 repository has some strict guidelines <laughs> how you can open source it. So, as long as WebDriver IO doesn't have those kind of restriction, we'll definitely do it. Other question? Right, right. Awesome.